Hi guys, welcome, and I uh, have something a little bit different for you today. I'm going to show you how to clean a manual typewriter. I've been a long time fan of manual typewriters and typewriters in general because they offer a very organic way to communicate with people and mail it across the country via snail mail. The thing is, is that they're not making these typewriters anymore. I don't think there is another company in the world making a manual typewriter, at least not in the quality that was from the late 1800s all the way up until the 1980s. So that being said, they all require maintenance and they all require being cleaned. I've had to learn how to do this on my own. Where this particular technique came from, I saw it being used in the movie California Typewriter. If you've never seen that movie, I highly suggest that you just take a look at it. Even if you're, you know, kind of like, oh, typewriter, who needs a typewriter? Serious enough, check out the movie California Typewriter. I'll put a link below here. Here, let me introduce you. This is a 1968 Adler J5 manual typewriter. You can, I've already taken the old ribbon out of it. But uh, you see how all the individual keys, see they're sticky. They don't want to work properly. I'm going to show you how to clean it. So let's go ahead and get started. On the Adler here, what we have to do is there are three parts of plastic that fit down over the top of the main body and all the mechanism. The top one simply comes off just like this. Um, you have simply have two screws on the front. Now, any other typewriter made, this is pretty much going to be the normal, especially one that has a plastic body on it. There's only going to be a couple, two or three screws, or excuse me, two, four, six or eight screws that actually hold the actual mechanism of the typewriter. Okay, we have two more screws back here. Okay, right here's one. And of course on the other side. So this is really just four screws hold a plastic base and the bezel around the keys themselves. Found that this little guy can be a little tricky, so. Okay, just a minute or two later, right here she is. This particular machine is, uh, I made this discovery the other night. I realized that it is actually a large, a m much larger font than any typewriter I'd ever seen. It's just a very unique machine altogether. See this, look, see how stuck those keys are? They do not want to move. Now taking a much closer look here, you can really see the grease, the grime, and believe it or not, what most of this is, you can see it right here, especially on top of the Q and the three, just that is all from cigarette smoking. So this, these machines have probably spent a great deal of time under the fingers of somebody with a cigarette hanging out of their mouth and of course blowing it on the machine as they were creating which it, whatever it was they were creating on this wonderful machine here. What better way to go than just good old proper purple degreaser? Yes, we're getting ready to give the typewriter a bath. All right, so pretty much all we got to do now is uh, just give a nice good coat of purple stuff all over the keys. You're going to notice in just a minute this, the see the nicotine just rubbing, running right off of those keys. It's really crazy how fast the purple stuff works. I'm just going to get the whole machine. There's no faster way. You see all that yuck and gunk coming out of here? You're going to be amazed with the results here. The, the tar and the nicotine from the cigarettes has really gotten into every nook and cranny of this machine. And uh, anywhere air can go, pretty much the smoke was going to go. Okay, so here comes the magic.
you're going to find that there's a lot of water in your typewriter. So what you have to do is make sure we get all the water out of all the little places. We just don't want any of it to rest at all. Okay, so we've got the washing out of the way. We've gotten all of the crud and the nicotine and the tar and the dirt and the old grease out of the typewriter that we can get. Now, now that we've stripped all that out, since the majority of the typewriter is all moving metal parts, metal on metal, the catch to it, now this is, this is the second product that I've used in this situation. It's uh, the Lucas Extreme Duty Gun Oil. You can find a link to it in the description below. That's uh, no problem, it's not an affiliate link or anything, but you can take a look at it. I found this at O'Reilly's Auto Parts on uh, like a countertop display. It has been a really good oil for me so far. What I used prior to this was a hobby bottle that had the same tip and everything as this. Um, got the hobby bottle off of Amazon and I put Duralube in it. Duralube is a fantastic additive I've used for years. But uh, that being said, if it's that good for a car, it's got to be that good for a typewriter that has much less moving parts. But So what I'm using now, Extreme Duty Gun Oil. A little history, one of the main things that happens with older typewriters is the lubrication that was used back in the day gums up. And when it gums up, what happens is you, this right here is what happens. See, the, the 9 key. So let me show you the key points that I like to oil. Um, basically anything that moves that's metal on metal that's going to have a lot of repetition to it I put a drop of oil on it let's get started on this okay just as a as a time saver I've worked this side of the keys now we're going to move over here I call this the carriage uh, the carriage is what holds all of the keys all the hammers you can see it this is how it it changes the position on the platen to get the uppercase and the lowercase letters the uppercase is on the top edge of the hammer. This right here is a hammer. See, right here is a hammer. And the lowercase is on the bottom, and then there's other symbols and such there. So anyway, what we're dealing with here on this typewriter, see, we're getting a lot of binding right down here in this part of the carriage here. So basically all you have to do with this particular oil or with this container is put a little drop in there little drop right there now you're not wanting to soak this you're just wanting to be able to get it hello Ava how are you got the puppy all curious here she's like what are you doing in my yard gotta go to the bathroom so I'm just working that see there we go another key loosened up The carriage that holds the paper, that's what it is. I'll, I'll refer to this as the basket. There we go. This is the basket. Holds all the hammers. The only way you can be in this particular, doing this particular thing is patient. <laughs> there is no other way that you can do. There is no being in a hurry. There's also what I call kind of a secondary basket point down here where each one of the see if you can see that each one of the keys has another pivot point here that's pretty it's a pretty important pivot point when you push the key there are a lot of little pieces that that move to make that happen see how it's even actuating the ribbon puller so every strike the ribbon is never hit in the same place twice until it goes through Okay, so just make sure that you get all of your pivot points, everything that you can see that's going to have any movement, any metal on metal. Just want to make sure it's all lubricated. I think I've pretty well gone through each of these. Also, make sure that you don't get any oil up on the platen here. Because if there's anything that gets on here, of course it's going to soak into your paper when uh, it's time to put paper in there. So. so let's go ahead and put the plastic body back on here.
Okay, we're gonna pop this on just to see what she looks like. Look at there. Okay, so we got the plastic case all back on it. We've got it all put together. Um, what I'm going to do next is show you how to install the ribbon, because without a ribbon, our little typewriter just won't type. Alrighty, for the typewriter ribbon, this is the original that came out of this particular machine. It's red and black. I'm not going to replace the red and black. I just didn't order a red and black uh, ribbon. You'll be able to find a, a link uh, in the description below if you would like to have a red and black ribbon for your own typewriter um, what I do have on hand right now are the solid black ones which really will last you twice as long as uh, a red and black one simply because you're only using half of the ribbon while you type and as that one starts to die or dry out from from use of going back and forth what you can do is then you switch your typewriter to the red link and once you switch to the red you're actually typing on an additional black so the trick here is is that what you're actually getting is two ribbons in one when you get the solid black one you get to use it twice as long really cool really cool tip there latex glove because this ink can kind of get everywhere when you go to spool it on spectacles let's open up the pack here let's go ahead and see if Everything's gonna fit okay. Okay, yep, that looks good. Got a nice tight fit there. Come right over here. Make sure that fits on your spool. Now, here's the trick. All you really have to do, we're gonna take the ribbon, run it down, and then right there, just like so. Looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Do the same thing to the other side. I can do this one handed. Got to run it through here. There we go. Shape on the back side here. The ribbon just has to slide right into that little slot. Now the next thing is testing it. All I gotta do is run a piece of paper in here. Let's do that. Okay, here's another quick tip. Since we are dealing with a 50 year old platen here, that, that's the roller that the paper goes on. Whenever you're typing, always make sure you use two pieces of paper and then you just roll two pieces together. And this right here allows the platen to not take such a beating from the keys. Here's the really exciting part about this particular typewriter. I did a little research earlier and I want to give a big shout out to Phoenix Typewriter in Phoenix, Arizona. You can find them at phoenixtypewriter.com or Phoenix Typewriter on Facebook. I shot out a question to them this morning about this typewriter. Turns out this typewriter is actually has the bulletin typeface on it. So watch this. Look how big that is. Isn't that cool? I mean, that is a very big font. Real quick little side note here. To get the, to get the, the plastic, because that's what this is, get the plastic nice and polished out and shiny. I don't know why I didn't think about it a minute ago. I had this out in my truck. It's a Meguiar's Plastic X, Plastic X. This little guy right here, I'll put a link for it down below. Um, anyway, I just used it as a final step after typing on this little guy, and it really made it look good. You can see the, uh, this is from the previous one. I don't know if you can actually see it, how shiny it is, but it's kind of dull. I mean, it's been around for 50 years. And right here, kind of see how this one gleams. See the difference? Well, I hope you can. 
At any rate, get a nice uh, light rubbing compound or uh, automotive wax that removes any oxidation off the of paint and it's going to do the same thing to the plastic. Anyway, that's a quick tip. Oh, good morning. It's actually the day after and I was getting these, uh, I was getting the pair of J5s together to take to their owner because they're, they're pretty much done. I mean, they're done. They're, they are, they are ready to go. It's awesome. But I realized one thing, the feet on the bottom of these machines here that normally go right here on the four corners are gone. Like they're just, they're gone They're And I didn't really think there'd be an issue. I thought that's just not right because when without the feet, it literally sits on the, uh, on the carriage lock and it stops some of the components to work. So I went to a local hardware store last night and did some looking around and what I found is a solution is this right here. Um, it's a scotch felt pad. Open this up. You can see here they're just little little foam uh, little felt pads. So what I'm going to do real quick is install those and show you how it elevates the machine. With the J5 turned upside down I'm just going to go ahead and put right here's where the original feet were. Now on the back one here, we don't have a lot of room to really get it to stick because it's right next to the carriage lock here. So I'm just going to get it as close as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stick it right here. I'm going to put another one right on top of it. Once, I, once again, this is really, really sticky stuff here. Let me go right back here. There's a good two thirds of it that's one's actually on the base, so this will be great. Okay, move to the other side here. Let's go right here. All right, I think that'll do it. Well, I guess that finally wraps up the reconditioning of these wonderful Adler J5s, and I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Phoenix Typewriter, who gave me a little information on these, and thank them so much for getting back in touch with me so quickly and letting me know on the rarity of the J5. If you need anything, anything manual or electric typewriter wise check out phoenix typewriter is a fantastic resource they're out in phoenix arizona and i am out here in the mountains of western north carolina sitting here in the sounds of summer as a butterfly flies over that's pretty awesome all right guys that wraps this one up i thank you so much for being here thank you for your time and keep on typing